Broadcasting from the heart of the I work for him nation to Christ followers, transforming their mindset and their workplace into a mission field. You've tuned into the voice of the faith and work movement. Hey, welcome to I work for him this afternoon as we broadcast live right here on Facebook. On the East Coast, it's still the afternoon, but on the West Coast, where these two guys are from, it is already early morning. The sun has just risen out there in Bend, Oregon, an amazing place, almost like Mayberry. Bend, Oregon is so amazing. The only place in a country that has a blockbuster video. And literally, if you ever watch the Truman Show, it is literally like the Truman Show, live, an entire town. Everybody is nice. Everybody is friendly. It's an amazing town. There's no traffic. The food is incredible. The service is amazing. And everybody smiles. It's unbelievable. We spent seven days there in 2018. And these two guys are from there. They can attest to the fact they live in an amazing place, surrounded by seven beautiful Cascade Mountains. They're snow-topped today. And so Mike Seip and Stephen Burhar, please thank you and welcome to I Work For Him. Thanks, Jim. Glad to be here. So, Martha, before we get started with these guys, usually you give a little commercial, and we're going to do some commercials midday, but what do you want to say to get started? Well, you know, one of the things I want to say is I know that a lot of people, um, well, I can only imagine how overwhelmed you've been by the amount of information that we're all receiving right now. And I just want to encourage you and um, thank you for those that are sharing positive things, that are sharing scripture, that are encouraging other people, that are living outside of your comfort zone right now and really looking for ways to serve others is not going unnoticed. I know that so many people are blessed by it and I just wanna encourage you with that and hope that in our show today, you will even get some new ideas of ways that you can be the light of Christ in your workplace. And in and right now your workplace more than likely includes your neighborhood on an everyday basis, although we talk about that all the time. Um, I just really wanna encourage you to keep it up. And um, if you are struggling or if you have something great to share, we're here for you so you can, uh, send us a direct message. You can message me. All that information's on our website, or you can do it right here through Facebook. So we're just so grateful for the um, opportunity to use technology to stay connected to all of you that we love so much. You know, they say on the media, never let a crisis go to waste. That's what I'm hearing from the media. And for once, I couldn't agree more, but a little bit different twist than what they're saying. When this crisis is over, we'll be a different country and a different people. And right now is the time for Christ followers like you and me to stand up and step up for those we work alongside, the ones we live alongside. And we need to introduce people to Christ. Followers like you need to stand up and live out our faith in peace during this crisis so that others around us can see us and feel the peace. But not all of us are business owners, but many of you are, or many of you work in businesses. And businesses across this country are in a little bit of a crisis because we've got incredible employees we don't want to lose. But a lot of times, in a lot of ways, a lot of businesses can't keep paying their people. So what do you do on the front lines of faith when life turns things upside down? Well, we turn to Jesus. But we're going to hear some stories today. We're going to hear from Mike Seip, who leads up 10X Groups, 10xgroups.com. Really want you to check them out. We're going to hear more from Mike in just a second. And he's going to introduce Stephen Burhart and his story. That's where these guys are from. Mike has got the beautiful 10X shirt on, and he's got the fireplace going behind him. He obviously isn't in Florida. Because you would need a fireplace, that would have to be like icicles throwing at you because it's already almost 90 degrees. And, and Stephen, he's got a snowy, he's in a snowy cave. That's why everything looks white, or white around him. <laughs> Mike Seip, tell me about this. You just got off done writing your book. I, I always want to say Avada, but that's not how you say it. How do you, how do you say your book? Well, I call it Avada, but the, Avada. Uh, okay. the, the Jewish pronunciation, I believe, is Avada, uh, <laughs> if you really look at it. We're not, we're not going to argue about that, but okay, so uh, Avada. Okay, so you just got done finishing the Avada principle. You've launched 10X groups nationwide. How are you prepared to lead Christian business owners and leaders into the new world of 2020 and beyond? Because when you started 10X groups, the world looked different than it does today. Well, it did and it didn't. Um, if, you, if you think back through history, this is, uh, you know, we've, as leaders, we've uh, we faced challenges before. This may be one of the most pervasive and, and one of the biggest ones, but we're no stranger to troubles, and and the Bible addresses that. But if you think about leadership, whether it was 2,000 years ago, 100 years ago, two weeks ago, or into the future, there's really three things that, that effective leaders need. One, they need a soft heart. They need compassion. They need kindness. They need love. They need a loving heart. Second thing they need is they need a quick mind. So they need to be intelligent and they need to be tuned up and they need to be capable and competent. 
The third thing they need to do is, is they need strong hands. So they need to, to be able to work effectively and they do need to work. And so in our 10X groups, we, uh, we focus on all three of those things so that we can have a platform to learn how to live an integrated life as a Christian leader. Mm, that's so good. So list the three things again for me because I was trying to write them down. What was the first one? Sure, so we need a soft heart, awesome. we need a sharp mind, and we need strong hands. Awesome, thank you so, so much. So you can go to many secular places and you can find um, uh, strong hands or you can find uh, a sharp mind, plenty of sources for that. Mm -hmm. But the integration of, of love and compassion along with competence and hard work is what makes a Christian leader effective. So why don't you tell us why you believe that the 10X um, Christian Business Roundtable discussion groups is a great place for people during this time of crisis for the business owners and the leaders to really get together. Sure. So earlier you said that, that God's not surprised about this, and, and I believe that that's the case. The Bible was true yesterday. It's true today. It's going to be true tomorrow. And uh, Jesus said, in, in this life, you're going to have trouble. And he said, but in that, you're going to find peace in me. He, he said, seek the kingdom first, and all the stuff that is bothering you, I'm going to take care of. And then he also said um, that the greatest command is to love God and then to love other people. And so our 10X groups give people an opportunity to do all of those things, to keep their priorities straight, to, um, to put God first, and then to love one another as they love God and as they love themselves. So, you know, one of the tendencies in a crisis is to become a little bit self-focused, not you guys, but others, um, to get self-focused and to become a little narcissistic about taking care of ourselves. And we do need to take care of ourselves, but we have a bigger calling and a, a bigger opportunity, and that's to care for others. And so one of the, the hidden benefits that emerges after a few months of being involved in a 10X group is the opportunity for leaders to care for other leaders. And there's a huge leverage factor in that. If you're in business, you like leverage. And the idea of, of helping other leaders is an enormous leverage concept because there's a, a massive ripple effect that happens when a leader speaks into the life of another leader. And that's what's available right. around a Christian peer table. Well, and we all want to become leaders worth following, and uh, being part of a 10X group may be right for you. So check them out online, 10xgroups.com, 10xgroups.com. And if you want to hear more next Friday, April the 3rd, we're going to do a radio show with Mike Sype, just talking about his book and 10X Group, so you can get focused on that on our radio show. There'll also be a podcast on that on April the 3rd. All right, Mike, you, you have brought in a good friend of yours from Bend, Oregon. Why don't you introduce your friend and talk about why you brought him here? All right, Mike, we seem to be having a little bit of a problem with your uh, audio. So I'll try it again. Uh, you brought in Stephen here today. Why? Sure. So, uh, so we have about 50 members in our, our 10X groups here in Central Oregon, and all of them have amazing stories. They're all incredible men and women of faith and leaders in the marketplace. And I could probably have lined up 49 others here that would have uh, incredible testimonies. But when you said, hey, who do you know that has a story that will, um, will just rock our listeners? One guy emerged, um, and, and you'll know why in just a minute. And so I, if you remember, I said, absolutely, <laughs> I know who it is. Yep. And uh, so then I called Stephen, and he said, of course, I, as he always does, as he always steps up. He said, Stephen... Uh, so you said, I'll, I'll be there for you, and, and also um, pleased and glad and honored to be able to, uh, to share some of my stories. So Perfect. only one guy out of the 50 that uh, right at the top to share with us today. Very good. Stephen Burhar with Stereoplanet.com. Welcome to I Work For Him. Thank you. Glad to be here. Stereo Planet. I, I want to hear a little bit about that. You run this business called Stereo Planet, Planet out of Bend, Oregon. How did the Lord lead you to be your, to, to your current calling a business owner? Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, in 1997, um, I was uh, highly successful uh, at 21 years old and uh, actually running another company and had a 15% ownership in it. Um, also, uh, living with my uh, my cousin and my best friend. Um, he's like a brother to me, just an extremely close friend. And, you know, it's kind of friendship that you can read each other's minds. Uh, and brand new home, just everything that, that you'd want in your life. My life was a 10 
and um, highly successful. And but the Lord was fourth in my life. I was going to church. I was in a college group. So I was doing all the right things, you know, uh, as far as the outside goes. But really, um, I was in control. And uh, I remember I was 13 in church camp one time and a guy said, you know, give your life to the Lord. And and I specifically said no. I mean, in my mind, I'm like, no, I don't. I don't. The Lord might have me go do something I don't want to do. And I'm not doing that. I want to be, you know, I had my plans. I want to be rich, successful, everything. Within 90 days, my, my entire life collapsed. Uh, it was a very fast, kind of like what's maybe happening today to some people, but uh, my career, through no fault of my own, um, was gone, and um, it was completely devastating. So the job that I loved and brought me so much money and satisfaction, and you know, everyone tell me how great I am, uh, was gone. And um, I would actually drive home in tears sometimes. I was so frustrated. And um, this all happened in about a 90-day period period. So it's very, very quick. And I was camping 1997 with my best friend and he uh, uh, slipped in the river and drowned and died. And um, it was uh, just, I was already on, on the ropes and, and completely, you know, beaten down and this just completely crushed me. And, um, you know, I got down on my knees after work one day and um, I said, my life is yours. I said, uh, all my money, all my time. Um, all my plans are yours. I'll do whatever you tell me to do if you just show me. And the next morning, uh, one of the first phone calls I got was Stereo Planet. And they said, we know we've asked you before because they had. You know, they've asked me to come to work for them a couple times. But, you know, hey, I mean, I'm doing really well. Why would I leave? They said, we want you to come to work for us. And I knew that was God putting me on a new path. And um, that was, you know, 23 years ago. Hmm. So today you're the business owner. You eventually bought the business. How many employees do you have? Um, right now, I have um, about seven. Um, we've been as high as 16. Uh, obviously, this has, you know, devastated our business. So we've had to make uh, some adjustments, te hopefully temporarily. But um, yeah, so about seven right now. So you're sharing that, you know, you had some really major adversity very young in life, and that is when you turned your life over to the Lord. How, what can you say to our listeners right now um, that maybe they have either, one, re, you know, been rejecting that as well and saying, nope, God, I got this, um, or, or just some lessons maybe that you learned along the way? Yeah, so um, the lesson I learned is that um, God wants complete surrender. Uh, he wants you know, right now our, our, our businesses are being threatened. Our very health is being threatened. Um, he wants us to just completely give all the outcomes or all the expectations that we have over to him. And when, when I heard that guy talk in church camp, he, he did say, is your life to the Lord? Um, I've learned over the last 23 years that it's kind of a misnomer to say I'm going to give my life to the Lord and surrender my life to the Lord because I'm going to fail at that. Um, there's going to be a day where I want to take it back and I don't like the results and I'm not maybe on board again. Mm -hmm. And so really at what I've come to find out and learn is that you can surrender your day to the Lord and your plans today to the Lord and your expectations today. Uh, but tomorrow you, you may fail and, and you may want to take it back. And the, the, the enemy can actually use that against you because if you give your life to the Lord and then sin creeps in and you want to take your life back, or maybe as I've done before, gotten very angry at God for a period of time, then you feel like a failure. Um, and, but of course we're going to fail because we're not Christ. I mean, Christ was the only one that completely surrendered his life to the Lord a hundred percent of the time. So what, what well, I would I tell find people, that you have to do it multiple times during the day. I mean, sometimes, and, and sometimes like, hey, Lord, yes. today, this is your day. And I, in the middle of this crisis, this is your day. And I trust you. And then five minutes later, I'm like, oh, holy smokes, I got to do that over again because I've yeah. kind of screwed up. So yeah. we're talking today with Mike Sype from 10X Groups out of Bend, Oregon. It's a national group. If you have ever thought about discipling and mentoring Christians, Christian business owners and leaders, perhaps you'd like to be a 10X group leader. You should check them out online, 10xgroups.com. Mike can talk to you. Stephen Burhart is his guest today as well from stereoplanet.com. Stephen, you don't do work anywhere else in the country outside of Bend, or are you just an Oregon company, or can you do it anywhere? Well, for the most part, we only do work within central Oregon, but certain clients want us to go to sometimes Portland. We've gone to you know LA, San Francisco, Seattle, but they're all people that 
we have a relationship already in Bend. Well, let's you just know, say somebody that we know has got a beautiful place on the beach on either the East Coast or the West Coast of Florida, and it's middle of January. Would you make that trip in order to be able to get them, <laughs> help them out? I mean, I, I don't know. Not, I mean, if I, not, not really. If I knew them, uh, but yeah. I'm just trying, just trying. All right. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> one of the reasons. I know you though. I'll go. I'll go for you. Yes. Okay. Like. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not one of those. I don't have one of those houses. Martha, why don't you tell people about some uh, our our field manuals and how people can download those first chapters? I would love to. So um, God has really just pressed on our heart the need to give some really practical, tactical, biblical, and factual resources around the whole i the conversation of I work for Him, and then also I retire for Him. And then she works for him. Three areas that we just really feel like God is saying, you know, we need to have a, something practical that we can um, share and take away and give to um, different people. And so in the process of that right now, we are compiling the whole books, but you can sign up to get the first chapter on our website. If you go to our resources page, we have a bookstore. And if you go there, then you can select the first chapters of any of those three resources. And then as we will get those to you via email. But that is just uh, the beginnings of what God is just doing and collecting. And it's a real collaborative effort. And so we're really excited about that because that's one of the core values of I Work For Him is working with other people. IWorkForHim.com forward slash bookstore. That's IWorkForHim.com forward slash bookstore. All right, Stephen, you have shared a little bit of your challenges. You got this COVID-19 challenge. You've got seven employees. You uh, are a friend of Mike Sipes. You got challenges everywhere. How are you dealing as a business owner? How are you specifically adjusting to the fear and the panic in your own employees as you guys face this challenge together as a team? Well, you know, I've been, uh, we've been in this sort of germ situation personally, and I've been through this an economic collapse in 08 before. So um, I haven't made a whole lot of adjustments, to be honest with you. Um, we, I've been doing the same thing for over 20 years. My 24-year-old son um, was diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy when he was about 11 months old, and they said he wouldn't live past three. So for the last 20 years, the common cold and flu has been life-threatening to him. Mm -hmm. He's spent over 100 days in the hospital. He's had pneumonia probably 12 times. He's, you know, I, he's almost passed away uh, uh, three times already. So we've been wiping things down and being careful and living with this kind of health fear for 20 years. So, you know, we're not, we haven't made a whole lot of adjustments, um, honestly, with, with what's been going on as far as the business goes in the 08 crisis. And along the way, I have made it clear to my employees that the Lord owns the company and um, I work for my father and um, it's been somewhat of a joke. I, I, I throw it out. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Say I work for him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and um, um, so, you know, yes, it has changed some procedures and we, we have some health policies that we've implemented in the company and, you know, calling clients ahead of time to make sure they're healthy and they want us in their home. But, and we've had to make, you know, financial adjustments, of course, in the, in the short term, but, um, yeah. So let's go specific though, because I'm sure not every employee and not every client that you work with is a Jesus follower already. So you got some people that are, that are struggling with peace and fear and panic. Um, how are you? How are you addressing that as a business owner in your organization? Sure. Well, it, it, we had, you know, we had had we've had meetings as, as as everybody has, and you know, one of the concerns of several of my employees was coming to work and and threatening my son's life, and um, and they didn't want to. They would feel terrible, obviously, and and that was an opportunity for me to to be light, and I just flat told them, I said, you don't consider that. I mean the Lord is going to protect my family. Um, we are going to be wise and we're going to be careful and we're going to um, not be foolish, but it, you, you, that is not a factor in your decision. Um, the Lord is going to protect us. And uh, if the worst, and I just flat told him, uh, if the worst case happens that, that he gets this virus and, and he does you know, pass away, uh, he's in heaven. And, you know, the worst case scenario for the believer is, is not uh, really bad at all. And um, so that was an opportunity in a real world boots on the ground. They've been hearing me talking about the Lord for, for years and it's just like a, uh, whatever. Well, this is where the rubber meets the road and I'm, you know, we're not going to live in, I told, I'm not going to live in fear. 
I mean, this is not, mm. we're not going to be afraid of this. Uh, the Lord is in control. He can control any germ in the universe. What a great um, example that is. So, so Mike, I want you to, um, you know, Stephen well, and what is it about him that you want our, the people watching us here on Facebook live, listening to the show? Um, what is it that you want them to hear that they can, that they can learn from not to boast, but to just say, you know, here's something I know about Stephen that God is using and that you want others to hear? Oh, this is easy. Uh, great question. Um, and you can already see it, those of you that are watching and, and listening to him speak. It's the steadiness. Mm. So it, it doesn't matter what's going on. There is a peace that passes all understanding that undergirds everything that Stephen does. It's obvious. This, he's not putting on an act here. This is Stephen. And, and the steadiness and the solidity and the confidence and the faith that he, he um, just emanates as he speaks there, that's who he is. So you're getting the real dude here. And that's one of the things that's the most remarkable thing. He's not shaken um, in, in spite of things that would shake all of us on this call and everyone listening. If you heard the whole story, it would be even more impressive. We don't have time for that. But if you heard his whole story, um, you would be amazed that this is a man that can be this steady. So, Mike, let's just talk to, you know, we got a lot of people listening that aren't business owners and leaders, but a lot of them, uh, many people will eventually that have heard it. You are mentoring and counseling and discipling and just speaking truth into the lives of business owners and leaders across the country all the time through through 10xgroups.com. Just take a minute and just speak about how we as Christ followers should be dealing with the panic in the markets and the panic in business in the business world well the bible is the foundation has to be you know we have to look someplace so so no individual person has has a an adequate answer no politician has an adequate answer no business leader no boss no employer no government official no educator no pastor has a human-based answer to this so we, we really have to look to the word. And so fundamentally, we need to, to um, devote even more than ever. We need to devote the first hour or so of the day to, um, to getting immersed in the word and then to, to hearing from God, because the direction that we'll get is, is the wisdom that we really need. And if, if we don't do anything else but that, we'll navigate much better because that's the source of our strength. You know, one of the things that, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, either Stephen or Mike, but um, one of the things I'm hearing is that, you know, your past adversity, Stephen, your past experiences, you learned from and you grew from and you implemented things into your business so that when the next challenge came along, that's how you were able to be more steadfast. And um, so what do you say to our um, listeners that are leaning in right now and saying, you know, I... I, I do want to come out better. I do want to um, learn something from this so that I can, you know, be ready for the next challenge, whatever it may be. What can you say to that, Stephen? Sure. Well, the number one thing is what Michael just said. Uh, you have to start your day with the Lord in prayer and in the word. Um, I'm very consistent with that. I, I have accountability partner that we hold each other accountable on that. Um, and the days I miss, which are I try to you know, be few. Uh, I feel the difference. So you got to start the day with the Lord. The other thing is you must live one day at a time. Um, it's biblical throughout New Testament, Old Testament. The Lord's not going to give you uh, peace and, and, and direction for next week, next month, next year. He's only going to give it to you for today. So you have to live today. It doesn't mean you don't plan for the future and order product for an upcoming project, or you don't today plan for something that you need to do in the future. But the worry and the thought and 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 the, for the future has it just it just cannot be there. And then the other thing you have to do is um, you have to I call it box A, box B. Box A are things I can control, and I work on those and I work hard on them. And box B is things I can't control. And no matter how terrible it is, even if it's health of my family, if I can't control it, it's it it, it, it I'm very disciplined and quick in giving it to the Lord. It just, okay, I can't control it. Boom, it's yours. I mean, it's, it's just become a discipline of, I can't control it. It's horrible, but I can't control it. Done. I'm onto the next thing that I can control in box A, right? Wow. So, so you, you got to be very quick about that. I mean, especially in times like this. Um, and the other thing is, is um, keeping your eyes on the Lord. I mean, that's the main thing. You know, 
the, the little thing I do um, and have done for many, many years is um, the story of the disciples in the boat, right? These are fishermen. It's a real storm. They're in the will of God. He brought, he allowed the storm or brought the storm. Jesus is actually in the boat with them. And this is a real storm and they're panicked and they're, they think they're going to die. And what they do is, is they wake the Lord up and the Lord actually he's rebukes sleeping. them. Yeah, let's just record. He, and he says, sleeping. don't you care? We're dying here. And he, they wake him up and he rebukes them. And so during the 08 crisis, especially, literally hundreds of times, I'd have a tough moment through the day, things are whatever. I would really quickly look up at the sky and say, you're in the boat with me. And that was just me saying the storm is real. Mm. It's intense. I might die from it. I mean, it looks dire, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to wake you up. You're with me and I'm not going to wake you up. And so hundreds of times throughout the day, just a quick prayer. Just you're in the boat with me. What a good one. Mike Seip, Stephen Burhar. Thanks for calling in today from Bend, Oregon. Thanks for being on I Work For Him. Thanks, to you. thanks, Martha. You've been listening to I Work For Him with your host, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. We're Christ followers. Our workplace, it's our mission field. But ultimately, I work, work for him. him. Okay, we're still on Facebook Live. Gentlemen, I know that the, the show itself, uh, this is what we'll, that is what we'll play. But is there any final thoughts you want to leave with our audience before we go today? Mike? You know what I'd really love to to um, do is have Stephen talk about how he has been a witness to his clients through all of the ups and downs of his business career because this is a, a really key uh, point and one of the reasons that I wanted to have you have him on the show. So Stephen, you've told me a number of times about the conversations that have arisen as you as you just do your normal work. Sure. With yeah. Day. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and this, this really ties in with I work for him. It's amazing. I didn't know the title of whatever I was doing today. I had very little knowledge. Um, I just showed up here. So, Mike. Okay. You're going to love this. You're going to love this because it really ties into I work for him. So um, I was, I had the opportunity to buy the company and uh, this is, this is uh, 2005. This is Father's Day. I'm closing on this business uh, in 30 days. Okay. I'm on the roof of my hotel in New Jersey because my son Ryan is having a major surgery where they're opening, it, opening up his entire back from neck to tailbone and putting two titanium rods in to support his spine and basically allow him to live. Um, major surgery, a big threat. I'm closing on a business. And I'm on the roof of my hotel, Father's Day, Sunday night. He's going to have surgery Monday morning. And I was praying for him and I just felt completely overwhelmed. Um, there was no possible way I was going to be able to be a father, a husband, a business owner and, and, and navigate for these employees. It's just going to be too much. I could not do it. And I, I was praying and I just felt the Lord speak to me. And he said, uh, why don't you give me the company? And then you're working for me instead of Larry, mm -hmm. the founder. And in that, I said, okay, I, I work for you. I don't, I was looking at it like I got to own the company. I've got to make all the right decisions. I got to provide for all these employees and their families. And I said, I work for you. And the stress completely went away in that moment. It was amazing. I mean, um, I, I was like, fine, I don't have to be the owner. I don't have to be the provider. Um, and so this is, this is late 05, right? Um, now, you know what happened next. Um, the Lord, as he often does, uh, you know, with the Children of Israel brings him to the Red Sea, and he brought me to the worst economic collapse in our in our lifetime. And um, I got mad at God for about you know sixty days, I think it was. You know, like why did you do this? I acted like the children of Israel, of course. You know, he brought me out here to die, and you know all this. And so, but I got a, finally I realized that you know God brought me here on purpose. This is what He does. You know, be prepared if if you give your life. You know, if you want God to direct you, He's probably going to test you. It's coming. So just don't be surprised. So now the 08 crisis happened and, and I sell high-end stereos and home, home theaters and, and that wasn't in much demand in 08. So I probably had 500 people ask me, um, how are you surviving? How are you making it? Um, and I told them the same thing every time. I said, uh, my father owns the company. I couldn't handle the stress. I gave it to my father and he's got un unlimited resources and uh, their eyes would get kind of big and Oh wow, you're a trust fund kid, you know. That's um, and I see why you're surviving now. You know, makes sense. I said, yeah. And my father spoke the universe into existence in six days, and that really sparked a lot of really great conversations because people were open to it, right? They were suffering. They and then the the facade dropped, and they're like, yes, I'm I'm struggling too. One builder actually told me, I'll never forget. He said, uh, uh, "Sorry, I asked." So, but. Uh, <laughs> 
But uh, so it gave me, um, like I said, probably I would estimate 500 times. In fact, I had a guy call me from Medford one day. He said, hey, man, I heard your story about you gave, somebody told me you gave your coming to the Lord or your father. And how does that work? And I was able to share with them, you know, and it, it's a stress reliever, right? It, it's it, as a business owner, you, you, you know, it's very stressful. And um, wouldn't it be better to have your father who has unlimited resources, infinite wisdom, can do anything, um, own your company instead of I'm the man, I'm the owner. And um, now I, I just gave a business presentation literally a month ago at 10X. It's, it's really crazy how, how fast things can change. But a month ago, I gave a presentation of my company. We talked about this and I was saying how, you know, for the last, what is it, since spring of 13, uh, we've been doing really well and nobody's asking me, uh, you know, how are you making it, right? They're only asking me like, where are you spending all your money? Um, so what is better for the kingdom of God, right? Is it for me to have money or is it for me to suffer and struggle? Well, I would almost argue that it's more effective for God's kingdom for me to struggle. And I said, nobody's asking me that anymore. And that was a month ago, right? <laughs> now I'm getting asked again. I can't believe like it's, I'm back in the, you know, in this situation because, you know, it's, it's obviously a, a crisis. We all know that. Um, so, you know, praise the Lord, but that's how, you know, that's, that's, that's one of the, the, the things that I do, you know, that, that, that I don't own the company. It's been kind of a joke too. You know, I, I, I tell the employees, like, we'll have a, a day where we all go golfing, you know, and I'll say, you know, Hey, throughout the day, guys, you know, just at least once look up at the sky and just thank the owner for the golf day. You know I mean? I, I have fun with it. Right? It's not, it's not a, a preachy thing. It's just, Hey, you know, thank the owner, you know, you know, in the, in the downtime, you know, my bookkeeper would come to me and like, you know, we don't have any money and this is all the bills we have. And, you know, I mean, it's like, I hate that, you know, unpaid bill file. That's a terrible file. You know, I want to throw it out. But uh, she's like, we don't have much money. And I would tell her, I'm like, well, I'm going to go talk to my father and ask him for some money. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I kind of have fun with it. Right. So, um, but um, that's how, you know, it ties in, obviously, when I see your I work for him sign. I mean, that's, that's, that's what I've been living for the last, well, 15 years, I guess. All we got to do is change it. And my father owns a business and I work for him. <laughs> I got to go talk to my father because I work for him. I mean, Excellent. you just, just got to add a little bit to Excellent. that sentence. Mm -hmm. Mike Side, close us up out of here. Well, you know, the, uh, the thing that I would say that is the most significant um, thing for me in my life and as, as part of being a facilitator of 10X groups is to be able to hang out with guys like Steven. I mean, imagine gathering a dozen or two dozen or three dozen or four dozen guys and gals like Steven and getting to hang out with them every month and to have individual meetings with them. I mean, the inspiration that, uh, that the facilitator <laughs> gets is, you know, it's just like the old saying, the teacher is the one who benefits the most. And, the, and in the case of, uh, of 10X, the facilitator, me or, or our other facilitators are the, are the ones that benefit the most because we just we get to hang out with, awesome men and women of faith, uh, awesome men and women who lead um, with soft hearts and sharp minds and strong hands. And it's just a wonderful, uh, just a wonderful thing. And Stephen, I thank you very much. Uh, you're an inspiration to me constantly. And, uh, and I'm grateful for that. And when all 250,000 Christian business owners, Christ following business owners in this country understand the concept that you've got understood, Stephen, our country will never be the same. So let's just train up one or two and those train up one or two and let's, let's change the country at a time because we do. Uh, we all need to be able to say, I work for him because it is all his and we're just stewards. So thank you again, Stephen Burhar. Thank you again, Michael Sipe from 10xgroups.com. And if you live in Oregon, Central Oregon, you can always check out Stephen online, stereoplanet.com. But no matter where you are in the country, you can start a 10x group very soon. Just go check out 10xgroups.com. Thank you again, gentlemen. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Bob.